good morning, Lion Hearts. Your old pal Jordan the Lion. How are you today? I'm feeling pretty much the same, so I'm going to go out and do our vlog and then I'm going to come home and rest again. I know it's turned into a broken record, isn't it? Well, today, what I want to go see is something I've actually never seen before. I know this location from 1921's Rudolph Valentino, I mean, basically the movie that made his career. Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse, there's a scene where he's riding a horse and there's this great moment where he's right in front of this place and I wanted to go see it and there's a lot of history of this place. They actually filmed a lot of old Cecil B. DeMille movies there, a lot of old westerns were filmed out there because this was a place that they considered to be a very good representation of historic California since it was built in the late 1700s and it was actually pretty close to the studio. So we're going to go out today and we're going to see the San Fernando Mission. Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. And today's idea actually came from this book. Just so you know that I am getting good use out of the books that you guys sent me. All right, buddy, you get yourself a little bit of a sun bath while I go do our vlog, okay? I'm actually real excited to see this, Ja. I've always heard of the San Fernando Mission. I've never made my way over there, and this inspired me to go, so. The updates on the shooting, the school shooting, and uh, just takes me back to high school when Columbine happened. I feel like we're reliving the same thing all over again. Well, friends, we have arrived. I've been wanting to do this for quite a while, and luckily, thanks to that book, it reminded me. Since 1797, the San Fernando Mission has been here. Well, there is definitely a lot for us to see today. I'm excited. Now, many of you may recognize these grounds from portraying the Alamo in Pee-wee's Big Adventure. Look at this fountain, this is beautiful. Look at the shape. They actually said there's a funeral going on inside the, the main church, so we'll go in there in about 15 minutes when it's over. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? That is very cool. This is called the East Garden. And uh, this flower-shaped fountain was actually modeled after an identical one in Cordova. Now this is interesting. From this movie by Cecil B. DeMille in 1914, that scene right there is taking place at the fountain that we were just looking at, right straight through there. And you can tell that the building that is right here wasn't here because you can see those arches in the background. So they would have been sitting on the other side of that fountain. Let's go match that up a little bit. So it looks like the cameras would have been set up somewhere right over in here. And then you would have seen them sitting right in front of that. And you would have seen all the arches in the background. They were obviously using a little bit different lens, but behind that building is where those arches are. Oh, take a look at this. hand-carved statue of Moai from Easter Island in the South Pacific was presented to San Fernando Mission in 1962. Wow. Easter Island. Pretty cool. Now this was actually the 17th of 21 missions in California. And this is the one of the bells for El Camino Real. And this is a statue to Fray Junipero Serra, 1713 to 1784 founder of the California missions. Now here's a pretty good plaque that I think describes a little bit of the history. Founded in 1797 by a father, Furman Francisco Lasuane, we honor those men of faith, courage, and vision who guided the founding of this mission and also those who have preserved it for posterity. And there's the emblem presented by the Daughters of the American Revolution. Oh, that's interesting. There's one of those sundials, kind of like when I was in Ohio and we went to Jesse Haynes' grave, the one that the Cardinals presented to him. It's 
it's pretty interesting. Now the building that is here in between the fountain and the building with the arches, this is the museum. So we're going to go inside the museum now and then we're going to take a look at what was the foreman of the property, his home, and then we're going to see where Valentino took his famous picture. Well, here we are. Let's go take a look around. Oh, look at the history. You can see what it used to look like out here. And this is more like what it looked like when Valentino was here. Obviously, they've cleaned it up a little bit. And in fact, Valentino's picture would have been taken right at the end of that arch down there. You can see it's drastically different now. Now, I believe this was the actual, like, convent back then. And this photo was taken in 1896. So we're going to be actually looking at that same building, and you guys can match it up when we get out there. Here's some old Spanish colonial plates from the late 1700s. And there you can see what the fountain looked like before they restored it. That's why you can see more of the, the white and the clay and everything throughout here in that photo that I showed you than what's there now. That's what we're looking at. That's where we're at right now. Oh, wow. Wow, there are a ton of artifacts in here. That's really cool. says pre-1500s Georgian chant on parchment. Oh, look, there's a lot of Native American stuff in here as well. Hey, that's Iron Eyes Cody from Ernest, amongst other things. I don't know what the deal is with this statue, but, but Shelley had one. I've seen a ton of them in museums. I, it seems like everybody had one at one point, casting of the cowboy. Even when we went to William S. Hart's ranch house, he had one. Now I believe this was the foreman of the mission's home, if I'm not mistaken. Look at that. Looks like an ancient wheel. Very well may be. Let's go on in. Oh, wow, very cool. That would have been the dining room area, obviously. Then you can see there's a organ over there and uh, the baking area, stove. And then the bedding area. Very interesting. They do charge you $5 to come tour the grounds, but it's so worth it. There's the baby crib. Whoops. Now, 
not terribly big, but honestly not terribly small either. Bigger than what I live in. Let's see, Mayor Domo. Now I believe right directly behind this was the convent. So let's go take a look at the convent. That would be this whole building over here. Well, this is open, so let's go in here. Oh, interesting. Well, I guess we can get in the convent. Wow, it's pretty, very colorful. Very colorful. Wow. I love it. This is beautiful. It's very, I mean, it feels very comfortable. Early 19th century. St. Anthony and Child Jesus. Let's explore this way first and then we'll come back the other way. This chair was used by Pope John Paul II for morning prayer at San Fernando Mission, September 16th, 1987. Now let's check up the bishop's room. Let's see how well I can do here. Some tight bars. I wish I could go in there and see what the, uh, I have it locked up, but I wish I could see what the, uh, the note on the chair in there says. Beautiful black and gold chair. There's something this right here says bishop garcia diego first bishop of california padre francisco de ybarra lived here from 1820 to 1835. it's nice now let's go check out the library all kinds of parchments and yeah 1757 late 16th or 17th century and then what i really liked i mean the, all these books are like 18th 19th century books of course pretty much all the binding and everything is completely worn out you can see right there but what i wanted to come in here for was i saw this wooden eagle carving and i wanted to see what this was because based off the base it looks like it would have been the top of something so the 18th century hand carved eagle was originally part of the lectern okay that's that explains it then 
All right, now let's go in that room on the other side that we haven't been in yet. All right, we're making it through the reception room. Padre Luisen room. stalls from 1550 it says wow That is a lot of old Santo figures. They're saints. That's what they call them. I saw a lot of these in Belgium. A lot of the churches had them. If you went downstairs, they had a lot of these down there where they had buried their priests and bishops. Check out this old pipe organ. You can see the uh, how old it really is because all the pipes and everything are bent up. But what else is pretty cool about it is that they have a uh, picture right here of Bob Hope from one of Bob Hope's movies standing in front of it with his leading lady. And it says this ecstasy organ from Chapel of the Congregation of St. Philip um, came from the San Fernando Mission in 1934 and it was later featured in a motion picture starring Bob Hope. In 1940, Bob Hope appeared in the Paramount motion picture called Ghost Breakers. So this was uh, from Ghost Breakers. Pretty cool. Now let's go see, I believe we have to see the Madonna room and the main church. So now as we exit the way we came, we're gonna take this and we're gonna go down to the Madonna room. Wow, that is an old crucifix. It says that this was the earliest crucifix at the mission. And this is one of the earliest confessionals. And this is another view into the, uh, the bishop's room from the side. Now I think this is the Madonna room. There is so much here, it's unbelievable. Look at this old Wells Fargo stagecoach. I had no idea they had this much stuff when I came here. Wildlife painting. This is the Madonna room. Wow. They have music playing and everything.
There's another wheel. Nice orange tree. Well, we are just about here. Now, like I mentioned, they did a renovation. They didn't change anything. They just cleaned it up, modernized it a little bit. So this doesn't have the arch at the top like it used to, but that famous photo that I'll show you here in just a little bit was Rudolph Valentino in Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse on his horse right here. See if you look right there, and it is a great movie. It's definitely worth checking out if you're not a well-versed Valentino fan and are looking for something to get into him. He was made famous by his tango scene in this. But right there is Valentino on his horse in the archways right here. Isn't that cool? Now I want to go inside the church and I think I want to end it by looking at the Bob Hope Flower Garden. And I know they do have a cemetery here on the grounds as well to some of the earliest pioneers and people that were instrumental in making this place and living here, but I don't know any of them, so I may go look at it, but I won't spend a lot of time there. Actually, there's a classroom in here, so we'll come back. We'll go to the Bob Hope Garden and come back. And Bob Hope isn't actually buried on the grounds, but he is buried extremely close by. There he is. Not his grave, just a really great statue to him. I actually didn't know this was here until I got here. And as you can tell, there are all kinds of flowers out here. That's a great thing to do with your money. I mean, if you you can't take it with you, so donating it is always a good idea. There's some graves over here. Okay, I stand corrected. He is buried right here. I knew he was buried close, but I didn't know he was right here. He's right here. Leslie Towns, Bob Hope, and Dolores Hope. Well, that was quite a surprise. I actually did not know he was buried in here. To be perfectly honest with you guys, I thought he was buried in the cemetery on the other side of this fence. <laughs> I was planning on doing Bob Hope another time. So, there's a surprise. Well, right here next to Bob Hope's grave is Anthony J. Hope. Wow, so if you're ever looking for Bob Hope's grave. It is in the very back of the San Fernando Mission in the Bob Hope Flower Garden. I... <laughs> color me surprised. I just saw this and I thought this was definitely worth mentioning and definitely worth acknowledging. Do you see the pointed arrows up there beside this crucifix? This is in memory of the 2,425 Native Americans who were interred in this cemetery of San Fernando, Reyes de Hispania, between 1797 and 1852. Now I think the kids are out of the church. Let's go take a look inside.
So I'll have to do some looking. I wonder if, uh, it now makes me think Bob Hope maybe would have had his funeral here. Wouldn't you think? I'll have to look into that. Maybe I'll come back and do a whole Bob Hope vlog. Wow, what a great day here at the mission. I had no idea what I was gonna walk into. Original Wells Fargo safe. I'm just, uh, one of the fun things about vlogging, I'm telling you, the pleasant surprise is I, I didn't know I was coming to Bob Hope's grave today. And actually when I was over there, I was kind of, I was trying to kind of rush myself because there was a family over there sitting in paying their respects, but now they're gone. So let's go back over. This man did so much. I mean, geez, everything he did during the wars, all the troop entertaining and everything, he's just modern marvel. I think Bob Hope's great enough. He deserves some extra time. Well, I don't think this vlog's gonna get any better than Bob Hope, so I'm gonna end it right here. I want to thank Catherine Piero and Shondell Young for becoming my newest Patreons. And I want to thank everybody for watching. This vlog did not exactly turn out how I thought. I thought I was coming out here just to see a little bit of the mission, show you, I don't know, maybe a photo or two from a movie, and we saw a whole lot more, including one of the greatest comedians of all time, Bob Hope. Have a great night, Lionhearts. Thank you for watching. And good